Hello, everybody. My name is Cody Spurlock, and today I'm joined with Keiston Abernathy. And today we're going to find out what is special about Keiston Abernathy, which, you know, for me, shouldn't be too difficult, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you, what makes you special, Keiston? What, what I think makes me special, in my opinion, is I think it's um, my tallness, uh, my hair, and just my personality. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And, you know, on all of those, I can already agree. I mean, you're a character. Like, like I mean, to, to say that when I think of people who, um, throughout Nickerson and throughout our, our school, who, you know, I can just, like, see in the hall and be like, oh, it's Keystone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're one of those guys. Um, and, but, you know, you're, you're more than just, you know, your, your personality because, you know, that translates to, to you being, uh, you know, competitive in some things. Like, for example, you know, football, right? Mm -hmm. You were... You know, you're a dog on the field in, in yes. football. So yes, go ahead and, and walk me through the process, how you can, you almost, you know, flip the switch from being, you know, this nice, you know, this nice yeah. charismatic dude uh, to, to being, you know, an animal, an animal on the field. So um, honestly, honestly, I think it was me bringing my three friends here, Joshua, Micah, and Zen. I think them, uh, me, me bringing them here to the school, I just felt like I needed to prove, like, like prove them to something, like there's a reason for coming here. And I definitely wasn't no beast or no dog, like, before. I was just, honestly, just, like, a kind of a normal player, you know what I mean? But I just, I feel like I needed, I needed them, I needed to show them, like, there's, like, another way. And, like, you can definitely be great. All you got to do is just have the attitude. And I just flipped that switch. I just wanted to prove to them and everybody, like, like, I can be something. Like, all these other years, like, I've just been chilling, but I feel like this year I definitely exploded, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and you know, I completely agree. And, and from the beginning of the season, you know, I was always, I was always, I would argue, number one fan. You know, I was, yeah. uh, uh, even from, from the moment I got hurt, you know, I was thinking about, you know, we still got dogs on the field. We still got guys on the field, mm -hmm. and you were one of, you were not one of, you were the guy I was thinking about, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so when we talk about, you know, your, your drive and, and the game of football, you, you bring up some friends that you brought here. Mm -hmm. And um, when I, I don't think it's understatement to say you brought them here. And you mm -hmm. know, that's that's crazy because, you know, uh, Micah and Josh and, and Zen, mm -hmm. um, these guys, uh, you know, have already been starting making contributions to you mm -hmm. know our, our school community. Exactly. You know, Micah is looking, you know, if he, he keeps putting in the work, he can also be a productive member on that football field. Yeah. And, and Josh, unfortunately, got injured this year. Same, you know, same injury as I with the yeah. ACL tear. So, yeah. uh, um, you know, he still has some potential to, to be seen. Oh, yeah. um, but when we talk about, you know, your contributions, they're, they're more than just, you know, what you brought on the field, but who you brought on the field. Mm -hmm. So, um, what was the you know what was the thought process behind you know so, you know bringing some friends over to Nickerson, um, and more people. Honestly, honestly, I just felt like I felt like Bueller and Hutch were uh, as I was going to. I felt like it wasn't it. Like they just keep telling me stories, all like all these bad stories about the teachers, just like the school environment and stuff like that. I'm just like, hey, bro, Nickerson's chill. Like it's definitely a lot smaller than Bueller and Hutch. So I just feel like y'all would just have a better connection with people in general, cause I just cause there's a lot more, lot less people. So then you know a lot more. I know you know a lot. Everybody yeah. know a lot more people. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and you know, I, I don't think there's been a single episode where I haven't talked about the you know the big school versus small school thing. But mm -hmm. um, I think in this case, it, it's it might be a little more than just big school, small school, because Bueller, for example, isn't that much larger than us, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, right. A lot more money than us. Yes. <laughs> that, that part's yeah. that part's definitely true. But I think Nickerson specifically, you know, it, not just because it's a small school, it has one of those communities to where you know everybody. Sometimes for better or for worse, everybody knows everybody. Okay. You know, everybody really gets to know people. And so, like, you know, we walk down the halls here. Uh, I met Josh. Uh, you know, at the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. every time I see Josh, it's you know, what's up, Josh? Yeah, you know, dab him up, and and you know. Um, that exist, you know, that wouldn't just that just wouldn't exist without you know you bringing Josh over to the school and you know Mike uh, uh, been able to you know find his you know footing here you know yes. also creating some friends that um, I would say you know exist even independently outside of your friend group you know mm -hmm. um, so you you you've been able to bring some people over here and have them establish their own connections. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, for that, you know, that's such an interesting thing that, you know, not many people do. You know, not many people are able to convince several other uh, groups or several other kids to, you know, create this own group within our school. Uh, 
you know, to, to come over and establish those connections. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, our, our community is better off for it. You know, it's, it's every, I, I haven't had a, a negative interaction with one of those guys. And, you know, I don't know all of them um, mm-hmm. very much. You know, I, I like to talk to Josh and Micah, you know, I've played football with them. I don't know Zen very well. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, those are, those are kids that, you know, already feel like, you know, that's, you know, that he's from Nickerson. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so, you know, it, it was, uh, definitely, a, you know, good, good find with them, you know, mm-hmm. so, so props to you for bringing people over, but, um, kind of moving a little bit, uh, away from, from football and some of and the friends that you brought over here. Um, what are, what are some of the other things that, you know, that you do here at Nickerson? Well, I'm in Magicals, which is the like top senior choir. Um, I play baseball, and I did play basketball for a little bit, but I decided to quit. <laughs> but maybe next year, since it's my senior year, and I just want to just just do everything I can because high school, you never get this opportunity back again. And honestly, some people don't like it, but honestly, I think it's just a fun experience for everyone if you just get out there and just show yourself to people. And I, I, I feel like you'll have a positive outcome if you just do that. So. I'm just going to try to do a lot uh, a lot of things and just for better or worse, I don't know, but it's my senior year, so I might as well just go all out, in my opinion. Yeah, and you know, that, that's a great mindset to have. And, and, you know, I talk about some of the, we talk about some of the things that you do, you know, football and, and you know, that that's one of the things that sticks out most to me, but mm-hmm. you've been on match goals every year you've been in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and assuming that you, you come back next year, that's, that'll be four years on match goals. Uh, you know, that's quite an accomplishment. You, you had Mr. Logan um, and Mr. Weaver, mm-hmm. um, and then you've had Burke uh, uh, for, as well. So, you know, you've had an arrangement of different, um, of different choir teachers. And so being able to stay consistently at, at that higher level, um, it's, it's a pretty interesting, you know, that's a pretty mm-hmm. cool fact because uh, it's not just, you know, you being an animal in sports, you're, you know, you're a great singer. You, uh, mm-hmm. you, you bring a lot of, uh, of life to the choir, mm-hmm. um, you know, some of the flavor to the choir. And, and so uh, that, I think that's probably a testament to how your personality kind of translates to some of the other things you do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, for example, I mean, sometimes when I watched Mamma Mia last year, I didn't know if I was watching, you know, yeah, yeah, well, watching your character, or if I was just watching you, because you know, <laughs> you, you, your your personality is one that it's like, uh, you know, it, it's just a, it sticks out. So, um, you know, you you were able to fit well into last year's musical, and yes. is that something that you you might be looking into doing next yes. year? Yeah, I feel like next year is definitely gonna be it since it's my senior. I'm trying to do everything this year. I didn't do it because it's just a couple things happened, and my sister wasn't a part of it. And I really just want to do it with her. And so if she wasn't going to be a part of it, then I just feel like there's really no need for me to be a part of it either. So and, I just sat out this year. And so you, you bring your sister, and and, uh, and your sister is, you know, another person without uh, within our community who's had a, a pretty large impact. Yeah. Um, you know, she's um, one of the largest contributors on the on the basketball team. And, um, I mean, you know, when I think of you guys, yeah, I, I, you guys are both athletes, right? You know, uh, one of... One of the things that come to mind is when she dropped 40 points on Rose Hill. You know, that was insane. That was a yeah, crazy feat. So it. what was it like and what is it like, you know, being able to to watch your sister who um, is also able to, to you know, make a name for herself and, and make a big impact on the school outside of, you know, things that you do as well. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it's... It's pretty good because when I when I came to school in seventh grade, like I didn't really know anybody. I just wasn't. I really didn't want to at all because I went to Bueller and I just really want to stick with my homeboys there. But when I came over here and like she was like like a top person, everybody liked her. She was a top athlete. I'm like, dang, maybe I do have a chance to do something. So I just like so I looked at I looked after her. I I I tried as hard as her. Like she was like growing up and being in this in in this district. I really looked up to her. Because I mean, she's my other half, and and obviously, if she was succeeding in what she was doing, then I'm just gonna try to do what she do and see if I can, and see if I succeed. And it's on. It's it's definitely working out. And, and you know, I, I again, I talked about this a lot with with the, the, a few different people about the sibling connections. Mm-hmm. Um, and and yours has always been one that's unique. I remember you you said in seventh grade, and I know you remember. <laughs> uh, you would you would come into the lunchroom without a care in the world, and you'd be like sissy, and mm-hmm. and you know. Us eighth graders, we laugh. Yeah. But you know, thinking back on it, it's not embarrassing, mm-hmm. right? You were you had a strong enough connection with your sister. You didn't care what anybody else mm-hmm. thought. You saw your sister. You were gonna go say what's up. You were gonna say what you're gonna say hi. And so, yeah. um, you know, I, I've always, uh, you know, when I think about siblings within NHS, 
you know, you guys are one of the, the main ones because of how close, you know, you guys, you guys are within the school. And then, um, you know, you both, you're both have major impacts onto the school community as well. Uh, um, you know, Khalees, she, uh, she doesn't, um, do as, as much of the music side, yeah. but she's gone into it more over the mm-hmm. past couple of years. She did the musical last year and I believe she's in concert choir this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, you look at, at the different set of skills, but then you also have some, some connections and, um, you know, she, like I said, you know, she's really good at, a at, at girls basketball and then you have uh, softball yes. and, and then the uh, volleyball, which, um, you know, obviously due to some of her injuries, some of her, you know, uh, she, she, you know, she's been limited yeah. in her, yeah, and definitely. what she can do, um, which, you know, I, I've said this before, I'm not, you know, I, I know how that is. I know, exactly. I know what it's like. And, um, you know, so assuming, you know, you have a nice next healthy season, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you looking to do in college? Ooh, this is very interesting. Well, so if if it all works out and, I'm, and like I said, healthy and football goes good next year, I, I really don't know what I want to do because wrestling, like professional wrestling, like WWE, has just always just been a big part of my just yeah. a big part of me in general. It's always been a part of me, and I've just always wanted to do that. And I feel like if I don't necessarily like. Maybe I don't know, get big enough for football or something. Because I mean, I know that that they can train you and stuff like that. But I just feel like my calling is definitely is definitely wrestling. But ever since this year, like the love for football has completely changed. It's, it's probably almost came to like wrestling. Like it's crazy how much it just flipped from one year. And and we talk about you know football and wrestling, and I, and I definitely want to talk about more about wrestling. But it, it's um, it, it's not an uncommon career path for a lot of professional wrestlers to play football first. Mm-hmm. I mean, Roman Reigns, for example, Brock Lesnar. Uh, I mean, the, the list goes on. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, uh, all of these guys, you know, they're, they're big dudes and they play, you know, they play football first. And so, um, you know, assuming if I paint you this hypothetical world right now where you have professional wrestling unlocked after college, right? Mm-hmm. If you could go anywhere for college, from from Bama, LSU to you know K State, Sterling, you you play professional football or you play college football. Where would you where would you want to see yourself? You don't have to just pick one. I think I'm gonna go that rock that that rock talk Jayhawk. I feel like KU is definitely gonna be. It. I feel like they definitely grown a lot in football over the years since 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 they started. They definitely have not been the best, but these past couple of years they they definitely have showed up. In the uh, college sports world, so I feel like so when uh, I when I said that you were a dog and that you were good at football, I'm actually I'm gonna have to retract those statements because if you end up playing for KU, <laughs> if you play for KU, I don't I don't know if I could see myself as as a Keeson fan. Oh. Uh, I, of course, uh, of course, I'm kidding. I would I would root. You know, I would want you to do as best as you could do while still losing to K State. Um, That's not gonna happen. That's not gonna and 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 so you know we joke, but you know. Uh, you know that's that's still D- division one ball is is something that I think that it's still it could be within your future and um, but more realistic speaking like after high school like after high school man to be honest I have no idea but a uh, school that I really do not want to go to is probably going to be Sterling it's probably just I just I just want to get out of this small close I want to be like a little farther like yeah I don't know just start try to experience time. some of that the, the bigger school and yeah. and you know you came up uh, with me to K-State me and Manny mm-hmm. um, and I talked about those Manny on our first episode of this uh, series but um, it's a different feel um, and, and it's it's a feel and an environment that I don't know if we would be able to appreciate without experiencing this small community first yes. um, and so you know we talk about uh uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages of a smaller knit community. And, and one of the advantages I think is, is, you know, it, it sets you up with a really strong foundation, mm-hmm. you know, um, in terms of, of morally, you know, you, you know, you kind of get a more clear view on right and wrong. And then also uh, uh, having lifelong friends that you can go out, do other things, you can go to other places, but you know, you always have your backup mm-hmm. plan. And the backup plan is this community because you know, there's, there's support systems here. And so mm-hmm. I think one of the advantages that it brings is we're able to appreciate some of the, uh, uh, the larger environments mm-hmm. more when we're, Definitely. when we're out there, because, you know, um, we always have back home. And so, um, looking at some of these bigger schools, it's, 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 it looks so fun, mm-hmm. you know, and, oh, and that's, and then personally, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to college is just having 
fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, I, I hope after, after high school, you know, that's one of the things you should be looking at. You know, it's, it's, it'll be our 20s, right? Yes. It's looking to have a little bit of fun is, it never hurts. Um, so uh, now, now I want to kind of de- dive deeper into to wrestling because, um, you know, I, I've talked with, with Manny about his love of wrestling, but your love of wrestling is unique um, and that it extends just beyond watching. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you have an interest in actually becoming mm-hmm. a, a professional wrestler. And, and walk me through how you kind of came to that, that realization that that might be what you want to do. Well, just... Ever since I was like three, when my big cousin introdu- uh, introduced me to it, like I saw it, I was just like, I like at awe. Like I was, I was this is something I like I never seen before. And I just thought it was so interesting in just everything, like all the characters, all the stories, like something that you would never really think, of, like other than like a movie or a show. But it was, it's, it's real life though. Like I mean, yeah, it's scripted, but it's real life. It's live. It's real people. And, and when people, I mean, obviously, people, when people say professional wrestling is fake, yeah, so it's an oversimplification, right? Mm-hmm. Because we all watch TV. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, for example, uh, just you know, Law and Order. It's not real, but mm-hmm. guess what? People it's still watch, watch it, mm-hmm. and it's because you know. I think the the misunderstanding is it's sports entertainment. It's it's, n- it's not, not just sports. it's not ju- it's not a as it's not like you know you it, it's scripted at yeah. the end of the day, which um, people will take a lot from from him. Just be like ah, it, it's fake. You know those guys aren't actually doing it. Well, you know that we know what they are actually doing triple backflips off of the top <laughs> rope. You know, you know what they're doing? Taking yeah. up four hundred pound people yes. over their head. Yes. So you know, uh, you know, yes. I'm I'm obviously you know I'm, I consider myself a pretty a pretty big WWE fan. So mm-hmm. I think it's important to know you know like the distinction between calling something fake and saying something is scripted. Yes. It's not fake. All that stuff is happening. Yes. It just you know it, it's pre planned because. You know, obviously, you try to you know triple backflip, kick somebody off the top rope. It might not and, and, and a fight <laughs> it might not work too well, yeah. but uh, um, it still has an entertainment aspect. And then the athletes are very real. Yes, uh, some of the most athletic people on the planet are, are wrestlers. Oh yeah, I mean, you look at uh, Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. You know, love him or hate him. The, the dude's an animal. Well, he's he's a US, yeah, he was UFC heavyweight champion. He's NCAA. NCAA wrestling, wrestling champion. Yeah. Uh, and, and that wrestling, not scripted. Yeah. So you want to talk, you wanna talk yeah. about, you want to talk about, uh, athletes. You know, Brock Lesnar's a 300 pound guy who, who even in his, you know, uh, later years is still, still a top tier athlete. So you want to talk oh, yeah. about, talk about the athlete side of it. It takes, it takes a lot. So, you know, is that something that you're, you're interested in doing, you know, really refining your, your skill set and then your physique because, I mean, you're a dog, don't get me wrong, but uh, you, you go into the ring with Roman Reigns oh, yeah. right now, you know, things okay, might not that, be, yeah. you're looking so good. Is that yeah. something that you're going to be working on over the next couple of years? Or oh, something? yeah, for sure. Definitely, because cause if I want to do that, also football, man, for both of those things, I got to get absolutely big, absolutely big. And, it's just a, it's just a whole process, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's and it's it really is hard. It's starting off it's hard because I just never think that I'll be in the situation like yeah I want to do it, but I never thought I would be actually this close to doing either football or wrestling. So now I gotta get in the mentality of like dang it's right there I can't let it slip away. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I gotta get my in that mentality to become either one of those. And, and when we talk about you know you know th- this mentality and mocking in. You know, it's not something that you haven't done before. Mm-hmm. The, the the ability to, to really lock in and, and get what you want done done is, is a unique skill set that, I, you know, not many people have. I think you, you are one of those people that have it. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, you know, best of wishes and, and you know, mm-hmm. on, on your on your way to, to deciding on what you want to do. But it, it really seems like, you know, you, you have big dreams right now, you know, being a being a, a major, you know, college athlete, that's nothing that not a lot of people do. And, and being a professional wrestler, it's not a thing that a lot of people, uh, you know, do. And it's not a lot, uh, not a lot of people are even saying that they can be close to that. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the, the, the fact that you, you have the ability to do those things and you have the option to do those things is one that, you know, I just find, I find crazy. Um, and, and so, we talk about some of the things you do, and obviously football is something that you're thinking about doing um, in college. But uh, what about things like a uh, uh, singing? Are you looking to maybe continue something on that, or are you going to be one of those football players who who <laughs> hop on who hop on some some albums? Or uh... hey, man, singing singing like 
at first, like, in, like, middle school, I really didn't like it that much. Like, I just thought it was something. But I still did it because it, like, I found it interesting. Just, I don't know, I just didn't really like it. But all these, but um, through all the years, I just felt like it was, like, like it's a challenge. Because music is actually hard. Reading, yeah. reading the music, because honestly, up to, like, sophomore year, I really didn't know how to read music. I just, I just kind of went off of memory and just, you know, wish for the best. But, like... But like last or this year, and like kind of like towards like the end of last year, I kind of really felt like I needed to learn this stuff because it, it's a challenge. And honestly, if nothing else works out, singing can be there. Singing is always there. Yeah. Like like singing is my voice, so I feel like singing could definitely be something. And then you know beyond just like the the actual singing part of it, you know, Magicals it was a you know it's a pretty pretty nice group. Like mm -hmm. uh, um, in terms of the students within it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of us got along really well, uh, and, and I'm no longer I'm no longer in it. But um, uh, you know, one of the hardest decisions that I made about leaving was leaving you guys. And so, um, you know, in, in terms of of magicals, you you have a section like specifically the tenors individually, mm -hmm. and then um, obviously a few other people throughout. But uh, it's a it's a close group, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Everybody's just. Everybody's together, and just and it really just feels like a family every time. Like like every like everybody feels like brother and sister. We always fight like brother and sister. Like it's always just and it's and it's all good. Like if we always fight or like I mean if we fight, then then like the next day then we all good. Yeah, and, and obviously with it being you know a group of, of singers and also you know theater kids. Yeah, drama. It drama is just second nature, yeah. and so from the kid as from from the student aspect side of it. You know, there's always been, there's always going to be, and always has been some mm -hmm. confrontation within the group. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, we could always kind of, you know, you know, push things aside and, and go eat Applebee's after every <laughs> single one of our concerts. Exactly. Uh, That's exactly um, it. Yeah. And, and, you know, that, that kind of takes me to, to some of the traditions that we have here. Uh, one of the traditions of being, you know, just going and, and eating mm -hmm. um, Applebee's after every concert we have. Mm -hmm. uh, you you've been a part of that for about the same time as I have because when I was you know before I was at Madrigals I would still go with Zach mm -hmm. to to Applebee's. What are some of your favorite memories from from those uh, those nights? Probably uh, probably honestly it's just kind of random, but one of them was just singing Happy Birthday to uh, I don't know I think it was the page I I think it was the page I don't know we were just all and I'm pretty sure it was a it's our last Applebee's. Of my freshman year, so we had all them seniors like Zach, yeah. and all in there, and it's just saying that happy birthday one more time because that was a special group to me. Like I was a fresh, I was the only freshman in in that class, so all them seniors, and there was a whole bunch of seniors in that class, so it just felt like they were all all my big brothers and sisters, and just to see them like go, it's kind of, it's kind of hurt. But saying that happy birthday was mad fire, and I like to just have all the, I just like to have the one last sing along. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I even, even with Manny, I've talked about how that group specifically was a special group, mm -hmm. um, so I could imagine, you know, I, you know, I was, I believe I was there that, that night, um, were, so uh, um, thinking back, it was, you know, it was emotional for a lot of people, because it's, um, even though, you know, you'll, we'll still see those people around, it's leaving high school always is a certain goodbye, it's a, uh, it's not a goodbye forever. It's just a goodbye for now. Mm -hmm. and, and that goodbye for now um, has a way of changing things. Because people in high school, uh, you know, they're different when we leave. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, but for better and, and for worse. But um, you, you never really are able to, to re retake some of those memories. So, you know, I, I remember I remember that night. And that, mm -hmm. was, that was a special one. Mm -hmm. um, especially after all the, you know, the the issues throughout the year and some of the conflict that yes. happened and then how we, how they were able to just, you know, yes. patch things up. And yeah. at the end of the day, uh, still singing together. Yeah. Uh, and then how, how it, you know, we came into it. And so, um, you know, that, that was a, that was a special, special moment. And, and when I think about Madrigals, I kind of think about the special moments that it brought. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my, my story is, uh, with, with it has been a bit different than yours. I, I came in when I was, I started singing second semester of my freshman year, um, first time in a choir class, just because I wanted to do the musicals. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I to do the musicals, I guess you need to be okay at singing. And, and you know, I, I always did band, so I kind of came in with, you know, knowing how to read music. Uh, and then, uh, you know, my sophomore year, singing with that, that group um, when you were a freshman. And, um, you know, that was special. 
we had we had a lot of interesting personalities there. Oh, and then yeah. um, going into you know my junior year, I wasn't really sure what was what was going to happen, right? Because I had uh, uh, all all those seniors all those seniors left, and then um, Mr. Weaver left during that summer, and so. Um, obviously, we were nervous going into that year, and we had a new choir uh, director. And, and, and you know, eventually things didn't work out for me. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, you know, I still remember all the the special moments that we we shared. You know, the 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 Applebee's with with Mallory and with Jolie, yes. um, and the and the jokes and whatnot. So um, you know, it, it's another interesting perspective that, that not a lot of students are able to share, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, you know, me and you, we do a lot of similar things, right? We, you know, we both, we played football together and, and we sang together. Uh, we did the musicals together. Um, and so, you know, those are a lot of, a lot of similarities. But, you know, I'm, I'm not the type of person to, to sit here and pretend, you know, uh, the, the younger guys will never be better. I know that you're a better football player than me. I know. And, and that, that, was, that was the easiest thing for me to ever admit. Um, moment moment I, I knew for sure uh, you were better than me is, you know, after I tore my ACL, uh, before I had surgery, I, I come back and I try to practice. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm running my mouth a little bit. I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, this drill doesn't make a lot of sense because the top guy has this weird advantage that, that doesn't really uh, simulate a, an actual, uh, a game. Yeah, an actual game. And, and you know what? I stand by what I said, What I didn't account for was, uh, coach Hamburg saying, Oh, okay. Keystone, come up here. So you know, I'm you know, I'm a big dude, and I'm like, oh shoot, <laughs> okay. So you're gonna put you're gonna put this dog on me, <laughs> oh, and I and I got a, and I got this torn ACL, and so you know, before I tore my ACL, I catch you off guard sometimes. You remember those moments where I'd be pulling, yes. and then you'd be yes. like, wait, that's not a bus. <laughs> but then the then this moment. Uh, you know, I line up, and it's like, you know, I, I decided to run my mouth. I decided to say something. I'm going to take my punishment. And the first time since I was a freshman, I got pancaked. You ran me right over. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people would, would, would instantly say, you know, it's my knee. It's my knee. And, you know, partially, obviously, it was. But a part of it was just, you are probably one of the best football players that I've seen here. And so... Um, In terms of, you know, trying to look at the younger guys and see, you know, who's going to be a leader next year? Who is that guy next year? Um, I've always, you know, I've always looked, I've always seen you as one of those people who next year, it's like you're going to be, you know, that guy. And and not just that guy in football, but, you know, that guy around school. And and, and so when we think of uh, of personalities um, and people who make our school up uh, and make this place special, you know, it's, it's impossible not to think about you. Um, and, and, you know, I look forward to having every guest on here, but I was specifically looking forward to this one because beyond just being able to, you know, do similar things with you, one of my favorite things is just having a conversation with you. I don't think I've had a conversation with you where one of us isn't, you know, smiling or mm-hmm. one of us isn't just laughing or something like mm-hmm. that, you know, and, and it's hard not to do right. Cause, uh, um, you know, you're a charismatic person. And so, uh, when when we have interactions, it's always positive, and I think that's one of the things that helps set you up beyond just um, your competitive side. Because like, um, eventually, uh, at, at some point of time, we're all told that we're not going to be playing. You know, mm-hmm. we're 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 not going to be playing the game we love. We're not going to be doing the thing we love um, in terms of, of the athletic side of things. You know, mm-hmm. um, wrestlers don't last forever, and football players don't last forever. And sometimes we're told that on the second game of the season. Exactly. Uh, and, and sometimes we're not told that until, until we're 40. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that reminds me of actually a, a quote. Um, eventually one day we're all told we can't play the child's game anymore. Sometimes it happens at 18, sometimes it happens at 40. It's from Moneyball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a good baseball movie. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, it, I, I bring it up because, uh, you know, beyond, if, if all of the competitive side just, just ended, I still know you would succeed. You know, I still have faith that, that you would still manage to find a way to make your impact because of, of who you are and, and of the personality and the, the, you know, the other intangibles that you have beyond just your, you know, your skill set and your mm-hmm. ability. Um, you know, like for example, next year, uh, I would, you know, I bet money and I'm not a gambling man. I would bet serious money that you are going to be a candidate for the football homecoming. 
And then when you are a candidate, I will bet money that you will win. <laughs> and I tell you this because next year when I come back, when I come back from, from probably, you know, K-State or something, mm-hmm. I'm going to come back to watch that game. And at the coronation ceremony, I'm going to hand you another one of my helmets or hats. And that will come full circle. Mm, uh, things that I'm looking tough. forward to. I like that. Um, that and and I, when I say, you know, giving you another one of my helmets and hats, I don't know if we, we talked about it. It's like mm-hmm. when I got injured uh, on the second game of the season, um, you know, a part of me knew that it was an ACL tear right from the beginning. I obviously hoped that it wasn't. But uh, – you know, going into the play that that, that happened in, right? I was um, we, we were having a problem on on defense, and uh, we couldn't we couldn't make the stops that we needed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I go up to coach uh, coach Bruce, and I say, "Hey, coach, if if Keyson's having trouble with this big guy, you know, big big number seventy nine, right? right so I was like, I'll I'll just take him, and Keyson will go around the side, and, and he'll make the play, mm-hmm. and and uh, it worked." The first for yes. the very next play, you make a TFL. Mm-hmm. Very next play, I go in, I hit the big dude. You know, it's like pick on some of your own size type stuff, and then you were left wide open. And then next play, uh, this guy overcommits to you, and then I get the sack. Mm-hmm. And then next play, I think it's another TFL on you. And then the next play, it's a TFL, but uh, pop, and and that was that was my ACL, and then I. I get off the field. I go into the locker room, and you know a lot of emotions running. I have the adrenaline from the game, mm-hmm. um, and then when you guys get in there, uh, you know I'm I'm still emotional. Right right before you guys leave, I take my helmet off and I give it to you, uh, and. That was the, the those were the nice speed flexes. So here at Nickerson, <laughs> that means something, right? Not yes. everybody just gets a speed flex. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, so you know, I, I handed it to you, and and I'm looking forward to being able to have that opportunity to to do that again. Um, because when I look at when I look at your class of, of kids, I, I don't know if there's you know I don't know if there's a, a guy who better represents what uh you know what I want Nickerson to be, um, and what I think our community can be. Um, and I, I have been talking about this a lot, right? You know, the beyond just your skill sets and your abilities, but the personality and who you are as a as, as a man. Mm-hmm. Um, and watching you grow and develop over the years has been something that you know I look forward to, and I look forward to seeing what you do in the future. Because you know, when you make it big, you're going to need an agent. <laughs> you <laughs> you're going to need an agent, right. and not only when you make it big, people are going to be looking up at, at this video. Um, you know, this video is going to go to you know like sixty to you know like. You know, 16 million views one time because everyone's going to want to know where did where did Keisha start or uh, what? Do you have a wrestler's name yet? I'm thinking Malachi Mo Money. I feel like that Malachi Mo Money. Yeah, because yeah, my, my kind of goes hard. My uh, middle name is Malachi, so I'm you know, just wanna have a character to be part of me. Yeah. So when we talk about uh, you know, when when I talk about you know people coming back and watching this, that might be the first time you you announce to the public what your wrestling name is. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the future. I'm thinking about who you're going to be. I like and I, I don't have a worry in my mind about the fact that you're going to end up making a, a great impact on, on whatever you decide to do. Um, so thank you for coming and having this conversation. Of course, thank you for that, having me on here. Yeah, this you know. Amazing. Um, and so everyone, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have uh, uh, two special episodes. Um, first, we're going to have the assistant principal and athletic director Alex Nuss on here tomorrow first thing in the morning but next we are going to have a Super Bowl special talking about some of uh, the thoughts of uh, um, what we think are going to happen on the Super Bowl that will be with Camden Cornelius and uh, Riley Bronner Um, so I'll catch you guys tomorrow and uh, have a good rest of your days